Hello, I'm Jack Rickard for Electrica Vehicle Television. He's Jack Rickard. TV. I knew that. Just checking. I don't need you for everything. This most thing. This is my compadre and consiglior, Brian Noto. Hey, I knew that. El, no, no, that's too, right. too. El Brano to you out yeah, there. El Brano uh, to the world at large. That, that's right. It must be Friday. You know, it's a it's a pretty good Friday. It's a, it's a pretty good Friday. Yes, it is. I hear church bells ringing, all kinds of stuff going on. Mm, yes, the uh, death of our dear Lord on this day, a Black Friday. But um, for EVTV, it's uh, another work. <laughs> no, no rest for the wicked. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. What do you got? Oh, that you know, some hit me, baby. There was some interesting stuff out there last week. Um, there's there's a lot of people talking about six dollar gas now. Six dollar uh, gas. I guess that what they're saying is you know you know Brent crude's at a hundred and twenty five bucks a barrel, um, you know all of the, uh, you know the the mechanics I suppose are in place and what really has started to happen is what we're seeing at the pump where just people are just starting to get like cooking the frog, you mm -hmm. know put them in the in the when the water are cold and then turn up the heat, we're being cooked pretty well. So um, we're, we're getting, getting used, used to, to it. Five dollar gas. Like yeah, we're getting used to it. Yeah, we're getting used to seeing it at four and starting to move north. Uh, the Lundberg uh, report also said that normally March is not a month where gas prices move, and we have in April that they mostly move in May. Well, we've been moving all the way through March and continuing in May. In April. April average right now is four dollars and sixty-eight cents a gallon. We're at three seventy-one here. In yeah, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. Yeah. Um, and we usually do a little better, but California is all. Oh fine yeah, out. getting you know, they're getting creamed. Yeah. And so I guess if you get used to it, if five's good, six would be better. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> I saw a, a thing uh, this week. The oil companies are braying that they paid uh, since 2010 55 billion in taxes, and all of Obama's hundred billion dollar investment in green energy. So far, they haven't paid any in taxes. Oh, well. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> Oops. And Obama's trying to end tax subsidies for the oil companies. The yeah. uh, level of political discourse in this country is so poor. It, it's horrible. With everyone yeah. a liar and yeah. everyone a uh, uh, special interest group that uh, solutions to problems are no longer really even relevant no it really doesn't even matter it's everybody is just out for themselves it, it's everybody for themselves I've yeah. been depressed all week what else you got you give me uh, some cheerful news oh well, let's see well i think we were talking the other day about uh i guess that we saw the chevy volt actually what they sold some some more vehicles i suppose we saw what was it uh what do you say? They, they did, but the reaction to that's depressing. They okay. sold uh, 2,289 <laughs> vehicles <laughs> on March. Yes, in March. And uh, uh, have announced that they're probably going to cut their five-week cutback down to four weeks. Okay, give back an extra week. And they may cut their three-week summer uh, shutdown back to two weeks, which it normally is. Uh, which it normally is. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Now, why <laughs> did their sales go up so dramatically, Brian? Uh, let's see. What happened with Chevy Volts? Uh, they got, well, they got that, uh, they, uh, in California, didn't they get that HOV lane? Uh, they got the HOV lane approved in uh, California. I think that's one thing, I guess. You know, the HOV lane's been approved for a long time. Chevrolet got approved for their car to be in it. Yeah, right. Yeah, for the Volt, because it wasn't uh, eligible was before. It a California thing yeah. for traffic. Their government at work again is let's take one of our lanes and make it for high occupancy vehicles, carpools. Yeah, which they actually proved don't work. Well, not only does it not work, but it's dramatically distorted the entire market for rubber lifelike dolls. <laughs> yes, that's right. They cleaned them out of the adult bookstores, I guess. <laughs> yes, they're all propped up in the seat <laughs> beside her. With big red My, lips. There was actually a company, My Little Buddy, that was making a uh, what looked like a guy rubber doll to sit <laughs> oh, in the seat in beside the seat. her. So it looked like she wasn't alone in the car, but what it was actually used for 
before was for HOV loans. <laughs> they caught hundreds of them. I bet. Yeah, and whacked them all with three, four hundred dollar fines. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yes, of course, Chevrolet Volt got uh, approved for use in the high occupancy vehicle lanes in California mm -hmm. and promptly sold an extra thousand. I think there might have been a little Man. bit of Will they ever resume the production? Well, probably line. I too. Grab I, I, I better grab one while, while there still is one. <laughs> among the people that yeah, there'll be a collector's item. <laughs> the um, the market for electric cars is kind of the low hanging fruit, as I've said. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, people very much like, and in many cases, very much the ones that are our viewers. Yeah. they'll buy an Same electric people. lawnmower. Yeah, they believe in the technology. They've lived with it. Once you uh, get past all the myths and misinformation through personal experience, right, right, um, then you're a pretty easy sale for an electric anything, even at a premium price. That, that, yeah, exactly. I yeah. had to wash my hands just before we went on the air. <laughs> they were completely black with grease. From building an electric car, huh? <laughs> no. From leaning, Le on, leaning that on that Escalade. Escalade that only had, what, three years on it and yeah, 7,000 7, 7, miles. miles. Yeah, yeah. And we don't even have an engine in it. No, there's it's just been stuff sold everywhere. On eBay. Yep. And, uh, but there's still uh, this film of nasty black grease I know. everywhere in that engine compartment. Um, it, it's disgusting. Yeah, in a clean car, too. I mean, it didn't leak oil. It, it's just no, stuff. No, this was a clean, tight new engine. Yeah, it's just stuff. Yeah. It, but yuck. it had accumulated a yuck yeah, in, in the, the members of the frame. I, I know. And this car was just covered with nasty, black, gritty grease. Yeah. That's kinda, disgusting. It's ugly. We don't deal with that with electric cars. I'm not accustomed to having my hands be dirty, and I... At a place in life where they shouldn't be. That's right. Icky. Icky. <laughs> but yes, they sold 2,289. Nissan sold uh, 1,000, about what they had the previous month. Okay. Ergo, my theory of the HOV lane and, and the people lunging at it in the hopes of getting the last of a collectible. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. For, if they get them while they last. <laughs> if they didn't resume the production line. So, yeah. in any event, it's good news. Congratulations, General Motors, even if it's not an electric mm -hmm. car. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but it's a step in the direction. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't do hybrids. No. What, what do no. you got? <laughs> well, we do have something that we can, uh, that we can watch. And... Uh, there may be a video with this, I don't know. Um, but the Chinese uh, have come, or the Japanese, excuse me, have come up with another wheel motor car. So we haven't seen one ever. We've never <laughs> seen the wheel motor actually go no. on the road. No. So this is a Sim Drive Corporation, Japanese based company. Uh, EV prototype. Now we yeah. have seen hundreds of wheel motor prototypes. Right. And so we now we need to see. We'll, we'll have to watch this and see if they ever produce it. This may I, be it. No, it's not it. I, <laughs> I know what I know what they're going to run into. I figured this out. The wheel motor uh, can't stand the side axial oh, yeah. load oh, yeah. on the shaft of the motor <laughs> that you <laughs> encounter in a car, yeah. and you wind up with a motor that doesn't last as long as the tires. <laughs> That's right. just, just, but change it all. lasts as long as the motor in a regular car. <laughs> That's if right. somebody does manage to bring one to market, don't buy one. You'll yeah. be changing your drivetrain with every tire Every change. tire change, that's right. <laughs> with four missions, our, you get four how motors. How about our buddy Chris Payne? Uh, actually, the uh, Revenge is going to be, I believe, shown on Earth Day. So that's April 22nd this month on uh, PBS. I guess they're going to show it depending on where you are, so you have to watch the listings, but it is going to be broadcast now. So uh, they're... We've, we've been on PBS. I yep, like, we've been I on like PBS. PBS. Yep. It's on excellent documentary on the opening uh, of the Panama Canal. Oh, really? Uh, construction of it and with a lot of um, historical it's footage. Got the archival footage. Oh, you got to love archival was, footage. I love <laughs> archival footage. Yeah, I used to saw a good yeah. a good show last week too on the elements. Have you seen that one yet? The I John have, po I that have was the good. One with the John Pogue. Yeah, that was and, good. And the table of elements. Yeah. And underneath each thing, there was an element. Yeah. Um, Chris Payne was yep. uh, attended and uh, our electric vehicle mm -hmm. conversion convention and was really quite 
you know, I think we wound him with. Uh, I think he had Chris. a great time. He yeah. uh, put on kind of a show about whether his producer would let him, but yeah. in the end, he aired. A preview, uh, not a preview, the full people. film yeah. of um, Revenge of the Electric Car. And so we were among the first in the country uh, outside of Tribeca. Right, outside the film festival, yeah. To exactly. actually see, see the it, film. Yeah. And uh, many of the EV guys uh, promised to uh, get out there and rabble rouse for it. Mm -hmm. Yet um, he was hoping to get it into distribution, and um, which you have to do to, to, right. to and try so, to make some money yeah it is now available it is you did get distribution uh, mm -hmm. i got a copy on uh, mm -hmm. amazon.com but now he's going to be on pbs and is available where? available in whole foods so whole the whole foods, foods markets yeah we mm -hmm. have it as a, as kind of their earth day thing too so that's mm -hmm. it's it's still out there and that, it's, it's great to see i'm uh, yeah i'm yeah. real happy for him This is the most secure location uh, that we can find in the building. You notice we have plenty of security down here. There's a degree of excitement around electric vehicles we hadn't seen before. But somebody's got to be the first one out here. We need a lot of people trying a lot of different things and then we see what emerges. It's a race. It's a total race. You know, until we see every car on the road being electric, we will not stop. Oh, Elon's going to lose his shirt. Elon's going to get crushed. God damn it, we've got to get these cars out. Things keep coming along from people outside the car business, and they all fall on their butts. You didn't get the message. Give us the cars that we want. I got the flood of emails saying, you sold out to the oil companies and you killed my grandchildren. I hope you rot in hell. They have based their whole company strategy on it. If it fails, there might not be a Nissan. You need to predict the future, prepare for it. If it happens, we'll be ready. These are people who are not going to wait around to have the solution delivered to them. I want to show the world that it's really possible. This is the future, and it's attainable. I don't see much point in uh, bringing him back, especially for Epcot again. I mean, we, we've kind of done that. Yeah, I mean, he, he was great. And last year he had a lot of things to talk about. And, you know, in the new movie and everything, it was great. He got to show it. But I understand you had a conversation with Rich Rudman this week. I did. I did speak with Rich Rudman. And he, uh, boy, he, he likes to talk. And uh, we spoke about uh, Evcon. Mm hmm and uh, about uh, Rich coming out to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we've invited him to uh, speak. I've since uh, invited him to speak at mm -hmm. the uh, uh, convention, and he'll be appearing, and have assured him he can uh, talk about BMSs and Redmond <laughs> regulators and call me little and ugly, and my mother dresses me funny, it's all good. EV TV is my TV show. We talk about what I want to talk about. Electric Vehicle Conversion Convention is just that. It's a convention of people around mm -hmm. um, the concept of converting right. electric vehicles. Um, and my job there is not to be the sole voice. I'm to pour the coffee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Make sure you have a beer. Yeah. If you hold out your hand this way, you get coffee. If you hold it out this way, you get beer. If you hold both and, of them out, you get both. And, and at the end of get the dinner. week, we're going to have, uh, again, kind of my choice, but the prime uh, rib smoked. Uh, oh, yeah, from our friends at Chartwells. Yeah. And so that uh, I fall into a housekeeping role. It's not you can listen to me every week. The concept yeah. is to bring together different ideas, and there is no Church of Jack or any of that. Uh, it's uh, we're going to have a lot of different points. We had David Kurzel. Mm -hmm. um, no, not David Kurzel. Uh, um, 
Well, Reap Systems. Re yes, Reap came out. Uh, yeah, uh, he's Dr. a BMS uh, uh, guy yeah. and came out and, uh, and talked. And so we have a lot of different views mm -hmm. at the convention because we have a lot of different people who have a lot of different ideas. Right. And it's a meeting and not a, uh, uh, you're not going to a movie. Yeah, it's not uh, a religion. Yeah. We did have a movie. We did. We had a movie. movie. But that, it, it's... Uh, uh, a place where you come and exchange ideas and concepts, build techniques, and uh, um, and and increasingly, I think there was some of this last year, and I think I think it's really Rich's interest this year. He wants to bring his Eastang. I think he has so. An electric Mustang. <coughs> he's, so. he's justifiably proud about, and it is very satisfying to have that reviewed by your peers who build mm -hmm. cars. I'll, as well as uh, certainly it's nice to uh, put them on display at car shows and stuff right you wind up with the same two questions over yep. and over right, right. it's kind yeah. of grinding yeah it's very different to uh, have your car reviewed by people who actually have right. been through that right right they have built cars and would have an appreciation of what you've done right they, they realize they go oh that must have taken a long time and so we had 28 <laughs> cars last uh -huh. we did and I, uh, I, I think that's uh, part of Rich's interest. I have been kind of egging them on. Apparently, there are at least two versions internally of a control board floating around. Oh, that's what you're saying the other day, the yeah. For the PFC chargers to finally give them yeah, that's a what little saying. programmability with regards to the voltage and the current, which would be cool, and so forth. Which mm. would be a very yeah. very cool. Yeah, that'd be real cool. And um, so. Um, uh, we'll have Rich Redmond. He, uh, he has promised to work on this for me. Um, Otmar can be a bit uh, reclusive, <laughs> but he's also selling the Zilla chargers yep, now. Yep, that's right. And, um, and I uh, alluded to the fact that uh, it would probably be a very welcome uh, reception um, if Otmar I th I think so. uh, yep. showed up. I think and so. so that's uh, that. Our friends at A123. Oh, I know. In the Flatnum series. Whew. Uh, <laughs> this is going bad quick. I can't uh, believe how fast this is going. It, it, went, it was just last week we reported this letter from David Vio. I, I guess I don't even think he'll be the CEO next week. Um, this oh, week, um, one, an analyst uh, panned them. Um, oh, really? Oh, but geez. worse, seven different law firms have tossed their hat in the ring, all of them hoping to win the lottery. Oh, man. And, uh, They're lining represent up. represent the class action lawsuit of shareholders' lawsuit. Oh, my goodness. How does this work? Well, it's uh, the mm. ultimate Monday morning quarterbacking. Since you're required to disclose anything you know, uh, any adverse bit of information about your company, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to do that. No, no, you don't want to do that. And since <laughs> to even know something, you have to communicate internally before you divulge it. And whatever the time period is, Congress, which is manned almost 100% by lawyers, has devised this cunning thing where they have a two-year lawsuit at the end of which all the shareholders each get 85 cents a share in yeah, settlement, right. or sometimes a coupon. Yeah, or sometimes a coupon, that's right. And the law firm gets $27 million right, take in cash. billable time. Yeah, billable take of cash. <laughs> and so there are seven of them who have Ooh. filed shareholder class action lawsuits uh, which all that will be presented to a judge who will then um, name a representative of the class mm -hmm. and his uh, law firm will be the then the lead the, law firm be the, the winner and will uh, wow. win the lottery and get the 27 million dollars three years hence yeah wow um, but this can be a very debilitating thing for a company they have to um, produce a lot of documents and mm -hmm. depositions and so forth, mm -hmm. which is disruptive. Yeah, all of a sudden you're uh, full-time doing that. But yeah. They, yeah, they need a full-time legal team to defend it. All right. And um, usually at a time when they're a little strapped. A123 closed 2011 with $187 million in cash. Um, their projected burn 
uh, estimated by the analysts this year was 155 million. That was before the 55 million That's estimated right. hit That's right. on the battery cells. Right, we told you about that. Yeah, the battery cells. Wow. And so Oof. they not only have a recall and have to replace the battery cells. Now, who is going to buy batteries for a projected OEM car? from a company that's under a class action lawsuit and right, it may disappear. running out of money. Right, no, no one. You, you can't. They'll never make another sale. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't do that. The only one they'll sell them to is me, through China. <laughs> that's right, and that has to come through the, we don't even know if that's the back door, just some door. Man, that's amazing. Amazing. And I'm kind of getting where I kind of like the sales. Mm -hmm. um, they're good sales. And no one else is really doing uh, lithium iron phosphate, which is, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, outside of China, right. which is the, the chemistry of choice, I think. Um, now, the, um, so it, it's actually, in spite of having beat up on A123 for the last three years, <laughs> I now find myself <laughs> no, in the awkward position <laughs> of commiserating with them <laughs> over what is about to befall them. Closed yeah. uh, yesterday, the markets closed today, but they closed yesterday at 95 cents to add an insult to injury. Ooh, if that's you fall below a, a dollar, uh, you get a warning, um, a notice that you'll be delisted on the NASDAQ. Yeah, yeah, we saw a lot of that in the, in the internet days. There were some and delistings. So <laughs> I, I hope to see a good fight from them, but yeah. I can't imagine um, a good outcome at this point. Yeah, it, two, it, it's going to it's going to be tough. And our two hundred and forty nine million dollar investment in a battery company that never would sell me a battery. Right, which which Mitt Romney actually <laughs> calls <coughs> which which Mitt Romney actually calls crony capitalism. The uh, yeah, when he's talking about Obama and some of these, uh, some of these things. So, wow, that's uh, that's disruptive tough. technologies are risky technologies. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, our political discourse now is of such a nature that everyone strives for support for their position. Yeah rather than a clarity of vision or thought as to what would be what? the best <laughs> right. solution to the problem. Yeah, that's right. We, we still have this problem. We're not going yeah. to make uh, oil go away. Uh, we should, of course, uh, drill for oil. We should, of course, produce our uh, natural gas infrastructure. We should be uh, on a full press um, to reopen the concept of the uh, thorium fluoride uh, um, mm. low pressure uh, nuclear power plants, um, and we should be uh, uh, taking a much stronger position on the development or the migration to electric vehicles mm -hmm. for personal transportation. Mm -hmm. These things need to all be done all the time, and without uh, notice of, of what today's gasoline price is, it, no one, no one cares. Yeah, who cares? What today's gasoline right. price is? What we need to be working for is what it's going to be uh, ten and twenty years from now. Right, right. We know it's not going to be less. Um, and for the godless, self-centered um, <laughs> <clears throat> morons among us, to um, uh, uh, focus otherwise is, uh, in, in my mind, high crimes and treason. It is crazy. Mitt included. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're all kind of wacky. Um, and they're, uh, they're all yes, wacky. Obama has uh, uh, spent $100 billion. He hasn't spent near that. Uh, they announced spending. They've spent right. paltry sums out of what they had announced. Um, and they haven't done well with it. No, they haven't done well. well you've um, got, yeah. I'm not sure that a lot of money is a good thing for a, a young company. Um, Hey, you tend wind up to lose focus. A lot of your time yeah. worrying about, worrying worrying about the, money. the money. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And buying office furniture, expanding office stuff, things that don't drive yeah, yeah. sales. Yeah, where you're just going to get more money. This is a company money. that would not sell their batteries. Yeah. No. I mean, what, what have I got to do? 
<laughs> Except like write a check would be a good thing to say, Here, here's a check. The how man gonna, didn't know get... enough to cash the check. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks business is about sucking up to politicians and selling to OEMs. Didn't quite work. It, it doesn't ever quite yeah, work. Yeah, it didn't quite work. Uh, had he gotten what he thought he wanted, it, the outcome would have been the same. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. yeah. If, if General Motors was using their batteries right now, nothing would no, get nothing any better. In fact, it would be worse. Be, yeah. It would yeah, be a it lot. It would be a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. Making them and not making any money. Well, and having a bigger recall. Having a bigger recall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fisker's and, bad enough. Fisker's bad enough. Yeah. They're, they're recalling 600 cars. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Of course, General Motors wouldn't be quite 10,000. <laughs> wouldn't be quite that many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you look at it that way, huh? But, well, it's, but that's worse. Well, that's, that's worse. Yeah. It yeah is worse. Uh, so that's the, um, the issue. But I don't uh, take any joy in what's about to happen to that company, and it's kind of inexorable. I don't see uh, a way of stopping it at this point. Um, I don't know what of their technology would come out and survive uh, bankruptcy. Yeah, but I don't that's know. Uh, very much where they're headed for. Um, and so I would uh, almost expect a, a bankruptcy filing and a new CEO within the month. Pretty soon. Wow. Um, and, and after that, it's months and years of, of nothing, um, particularly of interest to us, and, until. Maybe somebody picks up the technology. Right, and does and something with it. with it, yeah. So that's that. <coughs> Speaking of A123, I've had a little bit of activity on the uh, Platinum series. It's mm -hmm. discouragingly little. I've got you've been bogged down. Yeah. John Hardy and his book Ice, um, or No Ice, Thanks, but no thanks. He's got me launched on this Flatnum series, and it's it's uh, just turned out to be a huge amount of work for not very much battery. And uh, so the struggle to uh, productize uh, something based on the A123 cells continues, and um, and their um, availability in the future is so much. Yeah, we question. don't know. I yeah. did uh, send a uh, email to David Vayu and offered to. Purchase all their recalled cells. Uh, we haven't That's exactly right. gotten the price yet, but uh, yeah, you gotta love it. Yeah, gotta love it. And, uh, it's news for one person. Good news for one person. Bad. Let's take a look at my battery pack. Okay. Okay. I'm here at the increasingly terrifying battery test bench, where I've just got a whole octopus of uh, meters and shunts and things we've been playing with all hooked up in various uh, directions and some not so hooked up. There's a power supply. Um, this is with the Flatnum series layer one. I've got my aluminum plank all the way around. I added a copper bar with some heat shrink on it and an A300S uh, A30QS 800-4 Faraz Shawmut fuse. Uh, Faraz bought Gould Shawmut and became Faraz Shawmut. They've now um, been um, bought by a French company. Can't remember their name, but Merlets or something like that. Mercets um, in 2009. But they make um, uh, semiconductor fuses. Semiconductor fuses, um, they've got them, this A30 means uh, it'll do 300 volts, and um, QS800 is, uh, 800 is the amper rating. Now that's a little bit um, misleading uh, when you think of fuses. We're accustomed to thinking of fuses, if they're an 800 amp fuse, it would blow at 800 amps. Actually, these semiconductor fuses have a time current curve where they can go quite a bit beyond the 800 amps. Briefly, I'm gonna do a show on this. I'm trying to get some more information from this uh, French company and maybe get them to send a speaker to our convention to talk about fuses and fuse protection and fuse sizing. Uh, but I had one of these, and so I bolted it onto our terminal, run a copper um, bus over, and instead of having the gland nut, uh, put one of these uh, Cooper um, 
pass-throughs. Uh, drilled the hole in the thing and put this in. It's insulated, has a copper plug in the middle of it and some pretty substantial bolts um, to bolt terminals to. Um, I've added a contactor down here with a copper plate to our most negative uh, cell and we'll connect the next layer to the contactor, uh, the other terminal, uh, to connect the two layers and get up to 80 volts. This is a 40 volt um, pack uh, at, with one layer. Um, I have put in one of our shunts and I have our little JLD 404 on there. I also have a little voltmeter with um, a relay on it that I've got set up to um, um, run another contactor connecting me to our dyno load. <clears throat> it's a constant current load. And so I can clip that to one of the battery cells and it will monitor the voltage and when it gets down to, I think I've got it set at 2.6 volts, it will disconnect the contactor and disconnect the whole pack from the um, load. Now when you bottom balance these cells, I take them down to 2.6 on the load, it disconnects and the cells immediately spring back up to oh, 2.85 or 2.9 volts. At that point, we use our little homemade bottom balancer, which is another one of these little voltmeters with the relays. Uh, the JLD 404, by the way, will do this just fine. It, you can set the relays to work off voltage with it too. Um, but I use these because I can, it can set them up for like 10 volts full scale. And so I get a very precise voltage on them. This has a little, um, 12 volt power supply that you plug in and that runs a contactor through the meter and I set two voltages on this 2.65 and 2.75 so it'll go down to 2.65 disconnect when the ba battery rises to 2.75 it kicks in again and so it'll keep doing that until it won't get to 2.75 just under it and uh, again a, a, a 0.1 ohm 250 watt resistor and that's uh, our kind of automatic not really but kind of automatic uh, bottom balancer Dale Friedhoff uh, made one of these so they're not uh, difficult um, the um, so I went through and, and balanced all the cells 2.75 um, plus or minus 0.5 anywhere from 2.7 to 2.8 so after taking the whole pack down I went through and balanced the cells using this and a power supply. I had one cell that was quite below 2.75, down around 2.45. And I added some energy to that with a little 100 volt 10 amp uh, power supply um, and balanced them to roughly 2.75 volts. That's uh, from, from 2.7 to 2.8 let them set overnight and came in and they were back up 2.85 2.9 volts so i again went through kind of hand trimmed them this time with just a uh, the 0.1 ohm resistor and a voltmeter where i could just clip it on for five seconds or something 10 seconds and take some off and so i did kind of an anal over kill bottom balance on it uh, and the reason was I wanted to see how these cells would react. I assume that they're very much like the prismatics, and it turns out they are. I then put on a, a charger on the pack and charged it up to where, and, and of course, since we bottom balance it, all the differences in these little three cell um, groups uh, will be exhibited at the top of the charge. I had one cell up to 4.16 volts, which I thought was a little unusual. Uh, but most of the rest were right in line at 3.65 and a few below that. And that's pretty normal as well. It took 58.2 amp hours to do this. And I was quite pleased with that. Um, Again, most of our Chinese batteries are quite over the um, described 
amount. They call these a 20 amp hour cell, then they say they're 19 to 19.6, but 58.2 divided by 3 would be 19.4 uh, amp hours on average. And so these are all right in what A123 prints on their spec sheet as being the uh, normal um, capacity of the cells. So I was very pleased with that. I then bled it down again um, and was very pleased to see, you can see it's 0.184 amp hours is what was left when uh, my uh, voltmeter kicked off the load. And that's uh, pretty close to a uh, precise and full round trip at about 58.2 volts. Uh, I then let them set overnight and um, we'll go through, I'm at uh, 2.83 volts on the most positive cell, 2.80, and 2.789. And so these cells are within a tenth of a volt of each other. And that's good enough, especially for the round trip. And that's about what I had, about a tenth of a volt um, uh, when I bottom balanced them originally. Um, I had a couple of viewers uh, tell me that they just were really tired of doing this bottom balance with each charge. Um, the concept is to do this once. I'm going to bring in the second layer next and do precisely the same thing. Bring it down, bottom balance it, charge it, see what the capacity is, and take it back down to about this same level. And then we'll do the third layer as well. At that point, uh, all of them should be down around 2.75, 2.85 volts, and they will be bottom balanced. You should never have to do this again. The question comes up repeatedly, ah, Jack, but what about drift? Um, aren't they going to, over time, move around? Couldn't that happen? Well, sure, it could happen. Um, the problem is, with lithium iron phosphate cells, we've never caught one in the act of that happening. At some point in their life could it happen, I suppose. But again, so far, and we've got thousands of miles and years on some of these cells, <clears throat> not they one, two, threes, but our prismatics, and we go back and drain the pack down and they're all where they were at. The um, original Speedster, we actually rolled that car to a stop let it rest for 10 minutes, drove it another two blocks, and it again came to a stop. Let it rest another 10 minutes, and rolled it another two blocks to a stop right out in front of the shop, and hand pushed it into the shop. I put it on a 120 volt charger, and slowly charged the car completely, and checked all the cells, and they were fine. And we drove the car for three months. Um, we then rebuilt it with a whole new set of batteries at a different pack size, 192 volts, 57 cells for a 150 mile range, and took those batteries out and set them on the floor for a couple of months. After that abuse, uh, we put them in as a secondary pack uh, in the Ford Edge that paralleled the original pack that was in there and uh, have driven the car for six months. I've now got a transmission problem with it, um, that, but the batteries are fine, <laughs> and we're doing great service, um, you know, right up till the end, and, and I could take those batteries out and put them in a third car, and it would be fine. This is the advantage of bottom balancing, is if you do happen to take your pack down too far, uh, they won't reverse one of the cells, because they all arrive at the bottom at a, essentially the same state of charge. The um, 
And so no cells can, can gang up on a weak one and drive it through zero to a negative voltage. You can actually discharge these cells quite low. <clears throat> now they will swell a little bit. And um, if you get down around a half a volt, and, and uh, you do take off some capacity. Um, but they, um, if you reverse them to a negative voltage, you can't get them back at all. They're gone. And so we've demonstrated this over and over. You do a bottom balance when you assemble the pack, and you should never have to do it again. Um, they should, should stay there. <clears throat> no, I say never again. Let's say you <clears throat> drive the car for two years and, and learn that, you know, that controller will actually go up to 130 volts and I've got it at 120. I could get just a little bit more range with two more cells and you put them in there. Well, they would then be out of balance with the pack. So what you have to do is again, take the entire pack down to 2.75 volts and hand bleed the two cells down to 2.75 volts, install them in the series, and then do a full charge on it, and they are from then on, you know, one of the herd. Now they're newer cells, um, they may have a bit more capacity um, than some of the cells in your car, but that's all good. We're not going to use the full capacity. The other aspect of um, the um, um, bottom balancing the cells is we have to undercharge the batteries. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it depends on what you think a fully charged battery is. Some of the manufacturers have stated that it's 4.2 volts. Then the same manufacturers have restated it at 4.1 volts and then restated it again at 3.8 volts. Gradually the world is moving in my direction. We charge most of them to an average of 3.65 volts. The uh, China Aviation lithium battery cells, uh, we've been doing at 3.5 volts. Now, how much are we leaving on the table? The issue is to prevent any cell from getting up over 4.2 or 4.3 volts. So when I do a charge at 3.65, we'll have cells at 3.8 or 3.9. I actually had one at 4.16 volts um, yesterday. All that's good. It, it all works, and it's not a problem. Uh, you don't want it over 4.2. And because you've lined them up at the bottom, the difference in capacity now uh, instead of half, in, half of it appearing at the top and half at the bottom, you've moved all of it to the top. And so you undercharge the cells a bit uh, because that ragged um, voltage that you will see while charging um, is, uh, um, exhibits those differences. The lower voltage cells have a larger capacity and are not quite as fully charged and the smaller capacity cells will have a higher voltage and will um, uh, be more fully charged. <clears throat> that said, a fully charged, in theory, lithium iron phosphate cell has an open circuit of voltage theoretically of 3.4 volts. The way we charge them, you'll see them within an hour or two of the, after the charge discontinues at 3.34 or 3.5 volts. Now, to illustrate why none of this matters very much at the top and why it's okay to be at different voltages is the voltages are changing very rapidly um, at that portion of the charge curve. It's a very steep climb from three and a half, 3.55 volts on up, the voltage is just changing so fast you can't almost stop it in time uh, manually. It's, uh, it's almost difficult to do, it's moving so fast. And when we discharge it, and I noticed this yesterday, about 4% of your total um, capacity will be in the range dropping from the, the 3.35 volts that we count as fully charged to 3.25 volts is about 4%. Uh,
of your pack capacity. Um, and similarly, at the other end, from three volts down to two and a half volts is the other 4%. <laughs> and so 92% of your um, uh, capacity of your cell will be exhibited at a voltage from 3.25 declining to 3.0 volts. The, um, so that's uh, uh, the area you want to be in. You don't really want to take them below 3 volts in operation. Um, and you can monitor this with a voltmeter. The problem is that let's say you have had 100 cells. And, um, and they're at 325 volts, um, and you want to cut it off at 300 volts. That's great, except it'll be um, 325 to, to 310 will be um, happen very slowly, and 310 to uh, 3 will happen uh, much quicker. And, and 3 or 300 down to 275 volts will happen in the next three blocks. And so it's not a very linear indication of state of charge. And so it's not very useful, but it's, it very much holds true. And so that's what we're doing with the Platinum Series. I fall in love with this little JLD um, 404. I have a 500 amp shunt on here, and it's really very accurate as measured against um, our um, dyna load, as measured against our fluke clamp meter, and as measured against our charging power supplies, uh, it's really quite good and, and quite a bit beyond uh, what we see with Hall Effect um, sensors. And so um, kind of what we're probably going to do is I've got some little uh, very accurate 500 amp 50 millivolt shunts that are small physically and I'm going to mount one of those in the Flatnum series itself and um, and hook that up to the uh, negative terminal um, going out of the box when we install that and um, and run a couple of wires I have a, a wire here for to operate this contactor with 12 volts we'll run that and a couple other colors out a small very small gland nut to um, use to activate the contactor and read that shunt separately from our other packs with a JLD 404 and that'll give us some further information. So this build is turned into the John Hardy um, concept uh, has turned into probably one of the more vaingloriously painful um, processes of building a battery box that I've ever gone through. In the end, I don't wind up with much of one, 60 amp hours, uh, 120 volts. But that will be a very lightweight, uh, hopefully under 200 pounds or 225 pounds um, pack and um, at a relatively inexpensive cost. With regards to cells, I will have some invested in aluminum and hardware, but we'll also get some of our common hardware in out of the weather uh, with our contactor and our shunt um, to where that's not really floating around in the car. And so I'm going to pursue this. The next uh, stage is to take this back and um, get my second uh, layer, which has been assembled, and, uh, and go through the same process with that. But I thought I'd share with you some of the process of uh, checking capacity, which we want to do. I don't want if this one's 58.2 amp hours and I assemble one that's then 42 amp hours, that's not very good. And understand that an 80%, I've only got 48 amp hours to play with here in an 80% type regime. Um, and so this little pack is not going to take us very far. It will uh, put out an immense amount of current, um, that 60 amp hours should go a minimum of uh, 1,200 amps and, and probably uh, uh, quite a bit, May, maybe another 200, probably four, 1,400 amps. Uh, we've tested it, uh, them at 23C for 30 full seconds of discharge, and so I'm confident it can put out quite a bit of current um, instantaneously. But it won't do it very long at 60 amp hours.
And so it's going to be a small pack. Um, the total um, number of cells will be uh, 108. And um, so at $30 a cell, uh, that would be um, um, 3000 um, $200 in, in cells. That's somewhat competitive with um, a, a, a lead acid uh, battery pack um, and much, much, much lighter. Um, so, and, and this would be able to operate the car fully and you would have about the range, probably a little better, a little more range than you would have with a lead acid battery pack. And so the problem is the assembly on this is uh, just a, a lot of work. Um, we've got a vertical mill now that lets me drill these holes in my little clamps uh, very precisely, um, but it's still a tremendous um, amount of work to assemble this. So I don't want to underplay this. This is no panacea um, solution, but it is a way to put a little trade, a little sweat equity I wind up with a pack that's uh, slightly more than a lead acid pack, uh, a sixth of the weight, um, about the same range, and um, um, and get into an electric car um, for somewhat less money than you would do putting in ten thousand dollars worth of nice Calb one hundred eighty amp hour prismatics, uh, which is still would be my choice in building a car. Uh, even though I don't really need a 100-mile range, it's nice to be able to tell people that. Um, of course, if you built a car with this and it all worked and you like driving it and wanted to, to spend more money on cells, that's um, permissible. You're allowed to do that. Um, and so to get one on the road, um, this kind of concept is not entirely infeasible. In the matter of lawnmowers, motorcycles, and bicycles, uh, this is probably the way to go. Um, even though they are more difficult to uh, uh, come up with a, a module concept for, um, it's, it's still um, uh, a fairly light and small uh, battery. That's what and so again, these uh, cells offer us granularity and uh, very high power. Um, and um, but at the disadvantage of a, an extensive process of modularizing them into some useful container to put into a car and protect from the automotive environment. And so um, it's you save uh, perhaps a bit on the cells, but you lose it and then some on making the uh, um, housing for it. In any event, we're going to pursue this uh, and uh, on to the second layer. Okay, kids, we're back with Bimpo the Clown. Now let's uh, be sure and send all the adults away out of the room. We don't want any adults. Tell Mommy and Daddy to go in the other room. Okay. Here we are doing a uh, bleed down on our um, um, second layer of uh, the Flatnum series. I've got 36... A123 cells here in the three, uh, three parallel uh, 12 series. And um, we've uh, bled all our cells down to 2.75 volts and bottom balanced them there using our trusty little uh, bottom balancing thing. I've got my JLD 404 on here. And what we did was charge them until this cell here hit about 4.2 volts of being all arrayed under that somewhere and then discharge them all and we got a total of 55.8 uh, amp hours out of the pack um, the um, that's a little bit discouraging uh, it's not as good as the 58.2 we got out of the other one I'm at 32.6 volts but notice I'm at minus 0.263 amp hours on the little JLD uh, 404. A lot of dependents always talk about um, charging efficiency and how there is a uh, loss of efficiency in charging the cells. This is true of most batteries as a practical matter. 
And so they talk about it and assume that it's an issue with lithium iron phosphate cells. I would say that my observation is that it has not been. Um, on the um, earlier uh, uh, first layer, we uh, got back to 0.185 amp hours. Uh, on this one, we're at uh, 0.25, uh, 0.263 amp hours. And uh, if you divide that by our 55.8, um, you get about 0.0047 or 0.47 percent. That's really in the range um, of what I would call the accuracy of our meter. Now it's a pretty good test because I use a little voltmeter to run a contactor and we leave it on the same cell. We bring the, all the cells down below three volts, go through and bottom balance them and um, leave that hooked up. Um, we charge the uh, cells to, um, um, as I say, that where this one, our weakest one, was at 4.2 volts. And then we discharge it all again, and again that cut it out. And so we're really um, doing a round trip there of a charge to a discharge, and it comes out within a half of a percent of the um, the amount we put in. Um, and we got about a half a percent less than we put in, which would make sense. Um, but the amount is so small that I uh, hesitate to attribute it to anything um, because uh, it, it, within the, the measurement error of our device, and I'm quite pleased with the accuracies we're getting with the GALD 404 meter. Um, but that said, as a practical matter, there just is no efficiency loss to be accounted for um, in the round trip uh, that we're seeing with these cells or indeed with any of the lithium iron phosphate cells that we played with. It's just, as a practical matter, not anything you need to take into account. I'm uh, going to go across and read. I've rebalanced them. Um, but uh, they all came back down about where they were supposed to be. I'm at 2 2.72, 2.72, 2.74, 2.73, 2.72, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 2.73, 
as being the problem with um, one uh, car, as it turned out, um, from Fisker. And as luck would have it, uh, the car was the one they had sent to Consumer Reports that didn't uh, complete the check-in test. And that was the car that led to the discovery of the tab weld machine and A123's problems, which we'll talk about in today's general news session. In any event, I replaced those three cells. Um, I think they were right here. No, oh, maybe right here. And uh, I was surprised to find them. Now, I left them. All of them were about 2.75, 2.8. Um, came back the next morning, and the pack was disconnected from anything. Uh, but these had drained down to 0 0.6. And so one of the cells, uh, in spite of them being nailed up in parallel, firmly clamped, um, had uh, gone to zero volts and shorted um, and brought the other two down. The other two appear to be recoverable. Uh, I think they'll be fine. Uh, but that one is just a zero volt cell and apparently uh, shorted. And so... Uh, we have run into that with these cells. Um, has that happened before? Well, we had a couple of failures um, in our big uh, uh, resin blocks, um, and so quite possibly so. Um, but we were unable to determine it there. Here, I have access to all the cells, and we can uh, do it. The 55.8 is a little bit of a problem. Uh, I know that doesn't sound a whole lot worse than 58.2. But it is. It's 3 amp hours, or 5% um, of our pack. But it puts me uh, in mind to believe that if we properly charge and discharge these cells in a car, um, that you would certainly want to be within 50 amp hours. Uh, you wouldn't want to go past 50 amp hours on the cells. And so the, uh, that's pretty limiting. If you use this pack by itself, it means with 50 amp hours, 120 volts, you have a 6,000 watt pack. And that's a maximum 30 mile range in one of our little light speedsters. Now, that's pretty limiting, I think. Um, it's about what you'll really get with lead acid cars. But I think that's, that's pretty limiting. In our case, it's not too much of a tragedy because we're going to run this pack in parallel with our prismatic pack. We're going to use it primarily as a pack stiffener, stiffener and range extender. So the idea is to keep us up around 120 volts even when we're taking 550 amps out of that pack and so maximize the power to the controller. The other thing would be, of course, to extend the range and the 30-mile range extension on our Speedster Dow, which already gets 100 miles on a charge, would be 130 miles, perhaps a few more. And here's why. Um, the, um, this pack will be used as a stiffener, but if it gets low, it kind of draws on the larger pack. And so um, we, we have a much bigger number there to work with essentially 210 amp hours. Um, the two packs will be tied at the two ends. And uh, we've done some testing in here. There's not an instantaneous uh, equality between them, but they do draw from them broadly in um, uh, proportion. And they do take a charge broadly in proportion. And at the end of it, when you disconnect the charger, um, there's a little current flow between them and they sort it all out just fine. That you can't do that is, again, another armchair quarterback um, theorizing in a thought experiment. In actual use, it's uh, no problem at all. And that makes perfect sense um, when you look at a prismatic cell, either in here or in our larger ones. It's essentially a series of individual battery cells in parallel. And they all vary all the time. Uh, it would be great if they had a manufacturing process where that was not the case. So we use this to stiffen our voltage on um, speeds to part uh, duh to try to maintain that 120 volts 
uh, at 550 amps to maximize our power out of the uh, controller and to extend the range of the vehicle about 30 miles, which should uh, put it in just barely uh, over the, the limits of the 126 mile uh, Cape Girardeau Enduro, which we have planned for Saturday morning right now as a part of our um, electric vehicle conversion convention um, next uh, autumn. And so we're going to have that. And the uh, original speeder, Speedster Redux, uh, which already has a 190 volt pack of uh, 180s and can easily do 150 mile range. And so those two cars will be able to compete in the uh, Cape Girardeau Enduro, a uh, 126 mile loop just out of the range of most electric cars. And uh, we'll launch that on Saturday morning. Um, we'll have some regular sessions going at that time and then they'll be back to recharge and rejoin us at the uh, car show at Cap Hall Park uh, <clears throat> at noon for barbecue. And so that's uh, our second layer and we're getting closer with the Flatnum series. Okay, here I am with the Flatnum series. We've added our second layer in. We put in a piece of polycarbonate over the first layer and then lay down our second. Um, it goes from negative to positive. And underneath, I fashioned a piece of copper here that goes to our fuse. We had to relocate the fuse. I had put it in the other end, but it projected up too high and caused a, a lift of our second layer. We're struggling a little bit just with the bolts and the uh, um, uh, the double wides at each end, um, kind of raising it up some um, anyway. And so our Flatnum series is not entirely flat, and that's a problem. But I moved the fuse down here off of our contactor. Uh, the contactor connects uh, the um, uh, negative side of the bottom layer to the positive side of the second layer. And um, then I've put in a little uh, 50 millivolt, 500 amp shunt um, here on the negative terminal. Instead of using the gland nuts, I've put these pass-throughs um, that uh, will go on each side. And uh, then our top uh, layer will um, have its positive connected here to the negative end of um, the second layer, and it'll be the most negative end. We'll terminate right here, um, and we'll tie that to the um, um, uh, shunt and, uh, and out, and that'll give us our three layers. We're probably going to have to put our, um, as I had originally expected, our um, aluminum angles, raise them just a little bit. Um, I've got them cut out for the uh, pass-throughs already. Um, and we'll raise that just a little bit, probably give it another half an inch for that top layer. Um, and so hopefully about five and a half inches uh, thick. I've got about 10 inch clearance on Speedster Park Da. And so that'll, that'll leave me a scant four and a half inches um, amidships. Uh, to clear, not not much uh, clearance there, um, but uh, oh, some of the low riders do that anyway. Um, so we'll see, um, but it should be uh, something I could bolt on for test purposes and for the um, hopefully the Cape Girardeau Enduro um, in September. And so that's. Uh, that's kind of where we're at. We still have to do a third layer, which I haven't got assembled yet. Um, so work continues slowly. I have to tell you, this is an immense amount of work for six kilowatt hours of uh, battery. Um, and so I'm not sure that it's uh, entirely worth it unless you're really on a budget and really willing to uh, put in the time. I've drilled an awful lot of holes. Um, we've got ten dollars worth of uh, um, just um, mm, uh, Nordlocks in here. I'm sure, maybe more. Um, and uh, so the price 
the weight and the size of this continue to grow to get maybe 50 amp hours at 120 volts, um, it's a little bit discouraging. Um, but that's where we're at with it right now. But it's coming along. It's, it's flat. Yeah, it's flat. It's it's growing a little. <laughs> it's uh, you know got you got another layer in there. I've had some encouraging battery tests. Yeah, oh um, yeah, they tested out. They, nice. they uh, balance well. Uh, they return to balance well. They're very efficient mm -hmm. uh, on the round trip. Uh, they're, I'm growing more comfortable with them. They're more uh, predictable. I mean, part of it was just getting me used to the idea of a little bitty battery. Yeah. I'm mean, yeah. used to 100, 100 uh, amp hours being the, the, the kind beauty. of smallest that we use. And, yeah. Uh, and so it's taken. But um, the little JLD 404 meter has uh, given me a little better tool mm -hmm. to um, measure things with. And um, and it's going well. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I think I'm so. gaining in confidence in them. We did have one cell just fail, this flat short. Yeah, that one did. And, yep. um, so, um, you know, it is, happens. is that what they're talking about? Is that what caused all this? Um, I don't know. Um, but that's uh, what happened. And now let's see me get my hands dirty. Let's uh, let's take a look at your uh, escalator. Oh, yeah, we got, we got, sorry, we got, uh, you've been, you've been um, um, doing some harsh work here this week. Yeah, we got an escalate update. Brainiac, when last we spoke here, I had two marvelous looking polyurethane bushings, $142 <laughs> cash money hard <laughs> come by. On hand. <laughs> on hand, that's on the barrel head. Where are they? <laughs> They're over there in a, in a, in a bin. Are they in the bin, <laughs> with, the, all in the the bin with all the stuff that we've cut that was almost the right length? That's exactly it, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll use that for something. Uh, well, yeah, if we can find it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem around here. What, what was the problem? Uh, you know, the, it, the way that these uh, motor mounts, actually attachment points are set up on the frame, we they were going to be at weird angles. We we really couldn't get a bolt through. It just was going to be a nightmare to. We were okay fabricate. with the angle, but the um, this was slanted. Right. And the hole you had to work with was straight. Was down. straight down through two pieces. Yes. Yeah. And and not the same on both sides either. It turns out. So, our chances of getting those secured, in a lasting fashion, were pretty grim. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, I kind of like using the original stuff. We're back to our uh, original uh, GM rubber mounts. Yes, yeah, those are the, the stock mounts. But um, they bring things very close together. Yeah, we were uh, actually, the, the motor mounts were within the 11 inches. <laughs> they were going to kind of be in the motor. In a masterful bit of um, Euclidean geometry, <laughs> we calculated the diameter of the motor. Yes. And would you believe that a net gain warp 11 motor is what in diameter? I, as far as I calculate, 11.35 inches. Okay, so, <laughs> so not really 11. Not really 11. I mean, my math may have been off a little bit, but probably not that much. So you had to take down the mounts a little bit. Yeah, what I ended up doing was shaving down the inside of the motor mounts here. There was a lot of rubber, some metal. We had to take a little bit of metal off, but it, it we still maintained the integrity. The bouquet was... Oh, it was wonderful. We were wafting uh, BF Goodrich all over the place. Mm -hmm. And this mount, so we what we did is, is uh, just hogged it out a little bit and gave it a little oval because our holes were up here. Mm -hmm. And then we just put these on now mm -hmm. and slide it up. And now we're... Now we're in a good spot, and really the 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 motor is uh, the motor is going to slide them right up. Going to slide them right up, exactly. When we drop that motor in there, yeah. What are we doing on the motor? Well, this is uh, the motor side, and and if we if we take a look at this, this we're going to use on the top, and it's going to strengthen it a little bit here where the uh -huh. holes are. But this is a uh, and these holes line up with our two mounting holes on our two motors that are already on the motors, exactly. Yeah. And now you have a slot. We have a slot here, and this is going to assist us in attaching this plate because we're not quite sure when we get it in there where this is all going to go. Mm -hmm. So if we imagine the motor is in here, another plate over there, we're going to mount this in here. We'll drill a hole through it once we know where it is, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to uh, rough up the motor in there, and we may ultimately weld 
mm -hmm. uh, this mount once we get it in and see what we're working with. But we've got a little bit of play in this direction. Um, and we should, we really won't need any play in the other direction because we can drill the hole in this wherever we want. So the plan is we'll mount that on the motors. Exactly. One on we each drop side. the motors in between the, the in two between, angles. Right. And, and try and bolt it up to the transmission. Yes, bolt it up to the transmission. And then we'll reach in and mark on, um, on this, on that plate, right. our slot. Right. Drill the hole. And, and where our hole wants to be. Exactly. And then we pull the motor back out, pull this off, and put a hole in it. Actually, we won't have to. We just pull this off. Oh, okay. We should be able to oh, slide this right. off. Yeah, we don't, have to, we don't have to pull the motor. Yeah, it should pull straight right, up. Right, we should be able to pull up, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, put, a, put a, a bolt hole in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, we, just, we, had, we weren't sure here, but this is a nice thick piece of metal. Mm -hmm. Here, we'll just go ahead and put the hole where we need it. Okay. And, and we are really at, this is a, you know, a 3 16 and our motor was 11.35, and we've got about 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters inches between the point here when this is on the point there. So it should slide in real nice. I'm not too concerned about that brain. I think we put that 445 or 450 pounds of motor in between those two. Everything I think they're will gonna, spread and there'll be it'll, just It'll be like the room. Red Sea. We don't have That's to say right. a prayer. That's right. <laughs> we come down with that cherry picker and I think all that'll, it'll be close it, enough. It'll open up. I think uh, so too. What might happen, nah, that ain't even going to happen. Um, that you might wind up spreading at the bottom a little bit. Our bolts will pull it back the in. Bolts will pull it back in, yeah. Um, I, I have to tell you that the weight of that motor, I, I like bolts, but that's kind of a sheer yeah. situation. E even with a grade eight or better. It's and just... so I think we're probably gonna have to put it up on the lift and reach up and, and put a bead I think so. um, down both sides of that. Yeah, I think we'll weld and, it up, uh, yeah. Weld it, and then of course paint it black so it disappears. disappears. That's it. Well, that's the current plan. We've got another problem. I don't have a starter hole. No, we don't have a starter hole. And in the, the in our uh, Jim Husted, the genius, put us an access uh, hole. He did. He lives a little tiny access hole that's about the size of a socket. Mm -hmm. Um, but he had to hog out some of the bell housing to do that. He did. He had to take some material off of the bell housing. And, and when he sent the motor to us, we, he had it with the, we can it up another, what, 60 degrees or, well, no. There's eight, eight holes and 360, the, so uh, 45. The adapter actually was caught 20 degrees. 20 degrees, yeah, so we, so we brought it up his this mount. way. Yeah. Well, we have to use the same mount, those same holes. Exactly. And instead of having it straight up and down, he had it rotated. He had it. Have we ever developed a theory of why the man did such a thing? I can't tell except to put, possibly to put the terminals right on top of the motor instead of the mm -hmm. little holes to mount. But our whole mounting system is really based on the fact that we need to have those holes uh, parallel mm -hmm. so that we can use them to mount, to mount the motor in. Mm -hmm. they, they would have been... Instead of being parallel, they would have been up like this, and that really doesn't wouldn't have done anyone any good. I want to do two things then. One is you got to hog out that same thing. Yeah, I have to do that on the that bell housing on that, yeah. where it goes. Yeah. Number two, we have a small access hole right down here that has an access cover, and um, that's really to reach up. You can't really put the bolts in there. No. Uh, you can reach up and kind of pry the. The uh, you torque converter, pull the torque converter, converter out. The, yep. yep, with a flex, flex plate. plate. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's take our grinder and hog that out, uh, sort of at a 45, to where if we have to, we can get up in can there. Get a wrench up in there and stuff. Yeah, right now it's kind of difficult to get to the front of those bolts, so we'll open it up see if that helps us. We'll work out some roofing material, some plastic porch decking or something, something like that to uh, seal it up. Seal it up. <laughs> we'll uh, cobble something together. Pour us some resin, I don't know. <laughs> something. <laughs> the, uh, uh, but that we're struggling with just the mounting. Yeah, I think we're getting motor. there, Is this though. vehicle going to fight us every step of the way? Uh, probably. Yeah. I have heard that the ECU Okay, which is hanging off of here. Hanging off of there. Uh, we do have the right software, I'm convinced. Okay, good. The right rig good. to play with the ECU. To change the shift points, 
you have to change the mile per hour and the RPM, and uh, they kind of have to match. Okay. But I think I can count. I think we can figure that out. Yeah, yeah. And so we we should be able to change the shift points, um, if we can get it working normally. And, right. And thinking everything's okay. Right. And the, yeah. Right. Exactly. And then, and then we can, we should be able to figure that out. I have a constant little group uh, on the blog assuring me none of this can be done. <laughs> And who knows? And Ooh, it might maybe turn maybe. out that way, but we've got to try, guys. <laughs> yeah. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've, from the beginning, been okay with manually shifting this. Yeah, vehicle. This, this does have an option. And to it does have shift. a manual shift it does. on it. Yeah. Uh, the 6L80E is uh, developing a better reputation all the time. Oh, now, yeah. that just, they started putting that in Corvettes in 2006. Oh, um, okay. And this is a 2008. Uh, but the tuner guys are starting to pick up on this and do some monster, like 1,200 foot pound um, buildups of it. Really? Yeah. Hot, wow. Hot, hot so it up. To hot rod it. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, maybe some of our viewers can make me smarter on is they change the lockup. Oh, okay. On the torque, torque converter. converter. Yeah by changing the angle and distance width of the veins in there. This is a, a hydraulic mm -hmm. power transmission, essentially, um, that, that you have one turbine turning, turns the hydraulic fluid, turns the other one. <coughs> it will reach the point where you can't slip. Yes. At right. some RPM. Right, right. I do not know what the stock RPM is on the Escalade. But I think it's 2,000 RPM. It may be right around 2,000, yeah, yeah. All of the um, racing guys want to uh, change that mm -hmm. to like 3,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM, 3, even 3,500 RPM. Right, right. Yeah, they want to change that locker. <coughs> <coughs> This makes no sense for a street car, and some of these no. guys are doing it anyway. Yeah, no, it doesn't make any sense to slip that high. In the first high. place, it makes your torque converter very hot. Yeah. This transmission suffers from heat. That's why you had yeah, those had oil those coolers. two coolers, yeah, yeah, okay. We're, we're going to still have two coolers. Maybe, yeah, oh, maybe yeah. we'll even get a bigger cooler yeah. from Summit. We might need another one, yeah. And um, uh, number two, that's to get the thing to lock up, mm -hmm. I'm told, just below the point of peak uh, mm. torque in, okay. in the engine. Okay. We're at peak torque at zero. At zero, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we come on pretty good. <laughs> so probably yeah. the lower we can get this to lock up, the better. But yeah. nobody's doing lock up lowering Right, uh, right. y'all you you raise them, yeah, yeah, you raise a lockup, yeah. So again, the ice world and the um, electric uh, magnetic galvanic <laughs> drive just have, Engage. have two different... <laughs> yep, they, they, uh, they're coming at the same problem needs. two different angles, yeah. And so that's uh, the deal. But that's, um, that's what we'll do then. We got it. Um, that's what we'll do till next week when we change our mind. Again. Yeah, we'll let you know. We'll keep doing this until right. we figure out a way to put that motor in that damn Escalade. <laughs> I think we're pretty close. Yeah, I like this uh, yeah, pretty I well. Um, I think it'll be okay. The, the uh, held in the reserve is the concept that right here, where we've got this huge cross member, is actually almost exactly where our front bottom mounting hole is mm -hmm. on that motor. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it almost it falls is. in the middle it, of that it, it, it almost does, yeah. It's, it's like 20-some inches, and that's right, like 24 from the face. So and we, it's right there if we, we need it. We may do something there. Yeah, if we need um, it, we can do something. You know, just to hold up the front end of the motor a little bit more. Um, it's a very heavy system, about 450 <coughs> pounds, and it's going to put a lot of torque on things, but I believe this system <laughs> will probably arrest that as well as we can do it. I think so, yeah. Um, this is the icky kind of mechanical <laughs> part of EVs that I don't really like. Yeah, it's, this is the... And uh, Young Harbor was pretty good. He <laughs> wasn't as good as he thought he was. He got <laughs> under that Mini Cooper. Man, he had, thought he had it. And, and the next thing I know, he's in tears. It was popping on And I'm like, yeah. 
Matt, you ain't as good as you think, <laughs> but you ain't as bad either. That's Here, right. let, let's just saw on this a piece, yeah, and I right. think it'll work. Think you're gonna work. <laughs> but, you know, it didn't fit like uh, uh, perfectly the first time. No. He was uh, discouraged. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. we've never had anything under the car fit. The yeah, first that's right. Doesn't have to be perfect the first about? time. We just do it again. <laughs> what are you? It's a redo you to the grinder. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the concept is the redo. <laughs> concept of taking a little off. Take a little off shave a little <laughs> and uh, so it i mean that's the it's sort of hand fitment right braino actually is uh, unusually good at what i call fitment fitment by the way is not a word <laughs> it's an i idea. made that up it's an idea but it's a concept <laughs> right of taking a thing and worrying the shit out of it until, until it fits until it just all goes you take together. off a little bit you take off a little bit more you take off a little bit more and, and, all of a sudden and then you get a bigger piece and start over start you over. take off right. a little bit more and take off a little bit more and the next thing you know, it looks like he made it to fit. That's right. Uh, yep. <laughs> and I get frustrated before I get there, but his patience is uh, actually kind of frightening to watch. Uh, you think maybe Sisyphus could have won. Yeah, I, that's right. He might have gotten. He could have got, got the rock to the top. Got it to stay. Right. I mean, uh, with enough tries. <laughs> so anyway, we're. Uh, laboring uh, lost days and confused um, but I we're going to continue one little uh -huh. bit at a time till we get this truck moving you got it well I'm getting closer we're getting closer mm -hmm. you know the mounting system was something we had to noodle out and kind of concept it and well, and how you know, to insert those bolts. Jim yeah. Houston originally made a provision and hasn't worked out exactly. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm told uh, by young Hobber that uh, removing the torque converter and bolting it under the motor won't work. Well, that's, that's what I understood, we'll, too. We'll break the uh, There's too the many chances of the, the, we, right, the, the, yeah, the pump, the, the splines are tough to line up. So we'll uh, open up that, that access hole. And uh, we'll, you know, we only have three torque converter bolts, thank God. So however bad it is, it'll only be three. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, we'll get it done. That's a little frightening too. Though. I know, isn't that amazing? There's three bolts. Three hold bolts all of that the together. drive train together? Yeah. The, uh, the, the motor or the engine to the torque converter, when we wow. took it out, there were three nice hard bolts, but three. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Way, nice hard ones. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. I was really surprised at uh, how how that's uh, put together. I have been contacted by a fellow named Royce Wood. Oh yeah, okay, sure. And Royce, I think he bought, well, he bought some of our stuff. I think he bought battery straps or meters or something like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, doing a um, like a '67 Mercury Cougar or something. Mm -hmm. And has he got a pile of rust on his hands? Yeah, that's what he was saying. He's had some restoration work to do. He's also approaching this from the very uh, budget conscious end. Okay. Uh, he's gotten him a really nasty looking, but big, um, General Electric forklift motor. He did, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and is devising a, uh, uh, a frightening coupler, <laughs> an adapter plate for it. But he has a unique uh, take on this in uh, not idling the motor but using an external pump, and we'd heard of this before, to um, create the hydraulic pressure in the transmission oh. with a small electric motor and pump. It turns out the transmission he's using has a couple of test ports on it for this purpose, and it makes it easy to do this add-on. Let's oh. take a look at what he's done there. Welcome to KNR Custom Performance and Auto Care. Soon to be at an additional electric vehicle conversion shop, we hope. Um, we thought we would start with um, the motor we're going to use in our conversion. The conversion is a 1967 Mercury Cougar on the lift under rust repair at this time. Um, I think it would be very fun and get a lot of attention. the car and um, we can we'll with the details of the rust repair that we've done. Uh, Why? I don't think it's boring. You don't think that's boring? No, that that's cool. Do you still have the signs? Huh? Do you still have the signs that were in the bottom of the... No, no, that stuff's all gone. 
That's that, Jack and Brian don't want to hear about that. Okay, well, I think it's interesting, but go ahead. Well, that's on the blog. Oh, that's if true. anybody's interested in seeing the rust repair, they can go to our blog. Um, anyways, back to actual EV stuff. Thought we would start with the motor that we found that we're going to use on this particular conversion. It is a General Electric 11 and a quarter inch DC series wound motor. Um, this is the armchair. I, I purchased this off of eBay. Uh, I believe final price was somewhere in the range of $350 with shipping, $150 to ship it, uh, $200 for the motor. Um, anyways, I started taking it apart to clean the armature. Uh, we put this in the lathe, um, uh, you know, got this nice and straight right here. Um, actually purchased uh, what's known as a um, commutator stone to dress this surface. Uh, these obviously need to be smooth, straight, and without scratches uh, to allow maximum surface area on the brushes. Um, moving on to that, we need to um, you know, continue this performance upgrade. Um, I didn't like the end of the, the shaft, it wasn't going to work for our purposes. This came out of a forklift. This area here was um, splined. Uh, I ended up you know, machining that section out so it's nice and smooth. And that way we have a, a surface area there to grab a hold to with our Tsubaki power lock. And this little device, not this section here, this is an, actually an adapter we made. Uh, I was going to use it on a different style of transmission. Um, but um, this is coming off. Uh, the Tsubaki is this section here. Uh, this device is capable of 2,500 foot-pounds of torque before it slips. And trust me, once it's on the shaft, it is very difficult to take off. Um, anyways, like I said, I'll be making a new adapter for uh, the transmission that we're going to use for the Cougar. And we'll get to that transmission in a minute. Um, anyways, um, you know, these are the shoes that go in the field windings. Obviously, these are the field windings. These need to be taken home and this old material taken off. And uh, that'll be retaped and secured to keep uh, voltage flowing where it's supposed to flow. Uh, one of the reasons I like this motor so much is the brushes for the com. Um, this is a split brush design. Uh, they're, they're very large. Um, you know, that way it can handle a whole lot of amperage. Um, it's got the constant pressure springs inside. Um, I'll probably be getting in touch with Helwig to order the um, higher pressure springs for this to keep those nice and secure. Uh, down on the comm as we're racing this car as well as driving it, but um, obviously in the race mode it's going to have to perform. What else? I guess we could go on to the transmission that we're going to use. Uh, this is the casing of the motor. It needs to be cleaned and uh, prepped and all that stuff. I'd move it, but it's really heavy. Um, on to our transmission. Um, this is a Ford 4R70W electronically controlled four-speed automatic transmission. Uh, I've chosen this transmission for a lot of reasons. Number one, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, it makes a very good racing transmission. Um, they're very well built. Um, the, uh, this particular unit is out of an 04 Ford Crown Victoria. Um, they're capable of handling 700 foot-pounds of torque uh, stock without anything done to them. Um, with a few modifications to the valve body and to the um, uh, EPC, electronic pressure control solenoid, um, you can push these up past a thousand foot pounds and they'll, they'll handle it quite, uh, quite well. Uh, another reason that I chose this transmission is the fact that um, OptiShift makes a standalone control unit for it. Um, which allows us to change shift points. It allows us to lock the torque converter up whenever we want. Um, and these are all very bad cat. Um, 
these are all very important things for what we're trying to accomplish with our particular build. Uh, we're using the Zilla 2K controller for our build um, simply because we want to be able to race and drive on the street. Um, the Shiva is not available at any kind of a reasonable price and um, so we're, we're sticking with the Zilla. Uh, the Zilla, however, does not allow for you to idle your motor. Uh, automatic transmissions require fluid pressure to be built. Um, they accomplish that obviously by idling the ICE engine. Um, we're going a little bit different route. Um, I don't want to idle this large GE motor. I have a limited size battery pack and um, I'm afraid sitting at stoplights and, and um, you know stopping your traffic um, I just don't want to burn that energy just to build fluid pressure. Uh, we can build fluid pressure using a external dry sump oil pump. Um, these are used in NASCAR. Uh, it's essentially the same style of gear pump that's in our automatic transmission. Um, the, um, this particular pump, I'm gonna drive with this, this motor here. Um, this little motor will only pull two and a half amps at 12 volts. Uh, a very minute amount to get the fluid pressure I need to maintain the fluid pressure inside my transmission when I'm stopped. Um, the 4R70W allows me to build pressure through this test port. This is another reason why I chose this transmission. Uh, this test port here is the pressure test port that you use when doing any kind of um, diagnostics on this transmission. Um, they need fluid pressure in drive at idle to be anywhere from 75 to 100 PSI. Um, we can accomplish that very easily with our dry sump pump. Um, we're going to control that dry sump pump with a uh, RPM uh, window switch. Uh, it's an RPM activated digital control that the um, tuner guys use and a lot of drag racers use for the application of nitrous oxide into their ICE engines at a specific RPM. Um, we can use a two-way uh, RPM switch to activate our external pressure pump. When our RPMs drop below 200, we bring our external pressure pump online to maintain fluid pressure inside of our 4R70W. This allows us to get away with uh, idling while not idling. So um, I just think it's a much more efficient way to uh, use an automatic transmission. And um, like I said, I like the idea of the um, direct drive automatic transmission. It'll shift for us. What we're gonna try to do uh, is manipulate our shift points to keep this motor in its sweet spot. Uh, all motors, ICE or electric, have a sweet spot. And um, that's what we're going to shoot for, uh, to keep it as efficient as possible and keep it producing torque um, without uh, consuming too many amps. So that's the, uh, that's the plan for that. And uh, obviously we'll um, keep you up to date as we put things together. Rice, that's uh, fascinating. It, it is. I mean, that's, that's an interesting... Uh... Well, project. little take. He's doing things in a very budget fashion, uh -huh. and uh, and doing uh, some interesting things. He's been most anxious to get that on EVTV, and I, I think it's uh, our uh, viewers would uh, like to see that. I we have a so regular too. contributor. Um, I always call him John Allen. Uh, I get uh, <laughs> uh, aviation sales notice from some um, broker named John Allen that apparently can't sell airplanes. Can't sell airplanes. Yeah, but loves spam. <laughs> and so I constantly call him John Allen, or John uh, Hall. Uh, his name is John, John Allen. Allen, it's John Hall that we get, yeah. And it's John Hall that I get the thing, so I get confused with these guys. Um, but John Allen uh, was at Avcon, uh, was mm -hmm. a very personable fellow. He lives in upstate New York, has an English accent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and a Toyota, and he's rebuilding the Toyota, and, yep. and uh, we've been having fun. We've got, we've got, some, got some. Let's take a look. Good.
Well, hi everyone at EVTV. This is John Allen from New York giving you an update on my car. Uh, a lot has happened. I've been very busy with it, so not much time for uh, video making. Um, I've been bottom balancing all the batteries, uh, running them down uh, with my uh, homemade bottom balancer, uh, which has been working really well. Um, I've also been uh, getting all the wiring done up in the front of the car there and I'm continuing to work on my battery boxes. Uh, I've tried to organize the car a lot better the second time round so that basically I can whip out the two main, or few main components and be able to get to the motor and in the event of having to change the clutch or, or do any other sort of service uh, to the motor. And uh, so I've managed to uh, you know, create a new firewall basically and everything is fit, fitted onto that and you're going to see that in a little bit. Uh, also I had some fun with uh, some uh, battery box heaters which I want you to see and I'm very excited about that and uh, I'm hoping that's going to work. Um, other than that it's going on pretty well. I, I, I think I'm on the sort of home, home leg at this point and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to wrapping this whole thing up fairly soon. I still have a bit to do at the rear of the car, installing all the last uh, bits and pieces, the charger and um, the, the service switch uh, and the Ziva. All of those are going in the back and, and that I'll have to, uh, I'll probably get around to that in a week or two. Uh, but I'm hoping that it's going to be probably a month or so and then I'll be on the road. Pretty exciting. Well, I've been making uh, quite a few of these plastic boxes uh, which are going to be helping keep these sensitive little uh, pieces of electronics um, safe, uh, especially give them a place when all the wires are connected to them. There's a little potentiometer with tiny little pins. Once I solder wires to this, I want, to, I want it to be protected. So I've been making a few of these boxes uh, out of this plastic um, and uh, this one I'm just about finished. And then I'm going to put it inside uh, inside the vehicle um, uh, where it can be mounted nicely and uh, all the wires run to it and keep it protected from the weather and anything hitting it or pulling the wires, etc. So I'm going to be uh, gluing these strips inside here, mounted inside here so that they give something for the top, when, once the top's on, something for the top to rest against. Just need a little bit of this acetone, which works very well. Brush this on onto here. Basically, this stuff starts to eat it. Let's put a little bit in there and soften up the plastic. Put this in here. Get this spaced. I've got this set so that it spaces it nicely. It gives my exact top thickness. Press it down. You can see that nicely. It's on the other side. Great. Just let that set. And then I've got to fit the top exactly. It's just a little bit large, but I've got to get that just trimmed slightly. I'm going to use a just a, a normal smoothing plane, a hand plane for woodwork. And I found that works pretty well. This is what it's like, just getting ready. I'm hooking everything up. And I'm trying to get the the J1772 A V C1 board hooked up, got my 12 volt power supply here, got my diagram up here, battery positive, that's good and that's going up to that one there, and negative, at about the same length,
planet and my proximity. Okay, proximity. The pilot's the bottom. Let's just do the pilot first. It's the pilot signal. Couple more to put in. I've got my uh, keyed blue blue wire for my key, so that goes to the controller. I think I'm going to put that in there to the relay. That's going to go to the relay common and the normally closed. It's going to yeah. go there. The car is ever plugged in. Uh, the switch will be in the normally opened, and therefore the car won't start, which will be quite a good safety feature. I think quite a good safety feature. Let's see. Uh, and the J1772 green ground and chassis. That all seems the same to me. I don't know what's going on with that. I have to have two of those. Well, you can see my potentiometer's up in there, and I can adjust it with a screwdriver right there. And um, this relay is also going to go inside this box. I've got some one inch, uh, some of that one inch pink insulation in the bottom, and then half inch lined on the insides. Uh, of the box here. It cuts really easily, I'm just using a handsaw and uh, measuring it carefully and popping it in there. And then my batteries will fit in there. Well actually I've got uh, something else to show you which is uh, I bought some heaters, electric heaters, uh, that are normally used for under uh, concrete floors or tile floors uh, for radiant heat. And I'm going to try those out. Um, so I'm going to show that to you in a second too. Well I've got my box all lined here. As you can see it's all nicely lined with the insulation. And now I've got this mat which is an electric mat and it uses about 90 watts uh, and 110 volts. So what I'm planning to do is I uh, have this lined in here. I think it's uh, they come in two by three foot pads, and I'm going to push this down in here and try and figure a way that it's going to fit. Now I might adjust a few things here. Um, You know, I think I could even move the wires to make this fit, custom fit it. But the idea is that uh, I can on my I can have one thermostat, which I want to show you, and uh, this can hook up five mats, up to five mats in here. Uh, so I've got five battery boxes, and I want to get uh, every single one of them hooked up to this. So this will use, while plugged in and charging at night time, plugged into a one cord, a 110 volt cord, it'll use uh, about 460 watts if it was on full power. Uh, so that's not so bad really, it's about 5 cents an hour or something like that if you're using uh, the green electricity that I'm using which is 11 cents a kilowatt. It's really not a bad thing. Uh, it'll save the batteries and help the car charge up. I might even be able to plug it into the main pack if I needed to. I'm not sure. That I'll have to figure out later. But for now, okay, and the way that regulates the temperature is there's also a 
in one of the boxes I'll put this um, heat sensor which sends a reading back to this probably put that into this box over here which is the box that goes underneath the car and holds six batteries and so that will probably be exposed to more cold than, than any of the others so I'll put the, uh, the thermostat uh, heat sensor in that and, uh, and I think that will be golden and then it will just uh, read what's going on in this one and adjust the temperature so the other ones in the car might get a little warmer I don't know but but uh, we'll have to see if this works. <laughs> I want something. I want to be able to use my car uh, all season. So. so I want to adjust this mat size so it fits in my battery box. I'm going to be cutting it. I've got a mark line lining this up just here on my top here. I'm going to be cutting this whole mat across here. So I have to um, remove this wire. It's been stitched on. onto the uh, fiberglass mat here <coughs> and there's a, a point here where the wire actually gets <coughs> thicker and I think it's this is where the point at which the wire turns cold so it's cold all this wire is cold <coughs> and this wire back through the mat is what actually heats up so I've marked that just so I can make sure that that point remains within, within the box um, I marked it with a, a, a sharpie and I've done the same over here, it just gets uh, the wire gets thicker there which means that the internal um, sheathing or something has turned back on itself I, I'm not sure how they do it um, but anyway, and then I've got plenty of wire here, about 12 feet which will go right back to, from any point of my car, back to the uh, thermostat so I'm going to continue. It's a bit of a laborious job, but uh, I think it'll come up quite easily. There we are. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll just get it back to there and I'll cut the mat and then figure it all out. They were telling me, um, this is actually from Warmly Yours. I asked them whether I could use the, you know, hope they, they could make me some mats to do this. And they just said, oh no, you can't do that. Well, of course that immediately made me want to do it all the more. It's not designed for that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, nothing's really designed for EVs because there aren't any EVs around. So anyway, I went ahead and ordered them anyway. Each mat, which is two feet by three feet, is about $89. You get them on Amazon. And the thermostat was about $140. And that'll do five mats. So, um, it's really not too bad. It's quite hardy wire. It's not. I'm not really worried about cutting through it because it's got a very hard casing on it. Tricky like that. I suppose the only danger would be that it might get a little hotter there, but it's not going to get too hot. 
Okay. How do I fix that down? I'm going to drill this hole now for the for this through um, fitting. some of this aluminum stuff around here just to make sure that that doesn't create a connection As you can see now, I can attach my terminal uh, from here, the negative, and the battery down into this area here. Um, and there's no um, aluminum foil there in this area now. And that will give me a nice uh, through the wall of this box connection point for my cables on the other side. I'm going to do the other side now. So I've just drilled my hole for my gland nut for all the heater wire, uh, the heater element and wire for that. I've just got that on there. So that will allow my heater wires to come through. I'm going to feed them through now. Well, that's well, interesting. Electric heat with resistive wires in the battery box. In the battery boxes. John, <laughs> I got to tell you, you scare me. <laughs> you scared me with the motor. Now you're really scared. <laughs> Electrically heated battery boxes in New York. Uh, and and I, I, we are heating the batteries in Escalade mm -hmm. with the fluid. Um, but um, it's... Uh, Come to find out, you do not want to charge these cells below freezing, and in Cape Girardeau, and apparently in New York State. Upstate New York, probably, yeah. Um, it's it, cold it, up it there. It gets below freezing. And so the idea of heating the battery box is a good one. His uh, fiberglass mat and, and resistive wires. <laughs> Yikes. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> Thanks is, for sharing that. That John. is one way. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, exactly do that, but... There you hey. have it. Uh, let's do some reader mail. All right. I used to, uh, in the board watch, they have a letter to the editor and uh, read their email and, mm -hmm. and then shred them in public. <laughs> I'm not really going to do that, but we've got a couple of interesting ones. This one's from Robert Gilpatrick. Okay. Uh, and I'm reading it on a piece of paper of South Daytona, Florida. That's in microtype. That's my problem printing it out. Jack, I'm building an electric car, a Citroen. 2CV EV. The Citroen 2CV is actually a funky little it, car. It, it is. It's kind of cool. I yeah, gotta yeah, tell you. It, yeah. There's a guy up in New York that trades in sort of 60s, 70s mm -hmm. Citroen 2CV, and they're just cute. They're kind of like a Citroen Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. really funky little car. I like them. I have posted some videos of my progress on a blog I'm maintaining it. PimbletonDaytonaBlogspot.com. Couldn't get it to come up. Um, 
Uh, I could be much further along with my EV project if I hadn't run into some issues which I'm not very well equipped to handle because of my lack of experience and knowledge doing body work. There's a mouthful. I know, huh? That's why we don't That's do why we that don't do it. <laughs> I think restorations of classic vehicles are exactly the perfect application for a uh, EV conversion. Mm -hmm. So get on eBay and find one where somebody spent $60,000 doing the restoration. <laughs> Maybe get the car for 10. And are selling it for 20 <laughs> on eBay. That's right. Go buy that, pull out the yeah. Uh, yeah. beautifully yeah. clean little engine, yeah. sell, sell that, that on sell eBay. Sell that on eBay. <laughs> and you got yourself a thing. But yeah. doing the, the rust work uh, Man. Uh, after the fashion of Royce Wood is not in my job description. All the cars I've ever built, man, I never did buy them. I work. just don't I, do that. I'm not good at it. The electrical chassis issue seems to be worked out, and I'm anxious to put my EV on the road. Yeah, but you got to, like, replace the car. Yeah, yeah, make, make sure the body doesn't come first. flying off. <laughs> I am in complete agreement with your statements concerning the early adopters being a significant portion of the market for OEM electric vehicles. Recently, Mitsubishi began shipping their all-electric Amiev EV mm -hmm. to dealers, and we got one here in D D Daytona Beach. Only one. The initial mm. local newspaper advertisements gave the starting price as $21,995. Mm. I took the time to go to the dealership last week to take a ride. Sure enough, the dealer had two level two charge stations and one uh, car. Nobody was within 30 feet of the car nor the charging stations. I stood around the car for 10 minutes looking in the windows and kicking the tires. No salesman came bursting out of the showroom to help me. <laughs> I had to go into the showroom and stand around for almost five minutes before any of the numerous salesmen who wanted to know if I wanted something. I was no. the only potential customer in there. Yeah, I didn't want anything. You should have seen them scrambling away when I said I was interested in the electric car. The salesman wow. who finally offered some help admitted he knew nothing about the car. He missed the training session. Oh, the old I missed the training session. Wow. Anyway, I drove the car and was delighted with its performance for intra-city driving. However, when I inquired about the starting price, $39,000. That's not twenty. After a 7500 rebate from the federal government, $31,500. Mm -hmm. They had no idea how long it would take to get the model I wanted, even if I paid for it. Plus, I would have to have an electrical inspection in my house to see if my household circuits could handle a charge station. Before they sell you the car? My impression. Wow. The dealers don't want to sell EVs. <laughs> EVs seem to be something they must put up with in order to maintain their franchise. Even the manufacturers don't seem to be overly enthusiastic about selling them. There are no local mm -hmm. ads for EV cars, no volts, no Leafs. Granted, some Prius, uh, Prius hybrids, mm -hmm. but no pure electrics. The government rebates don't go to the purchaser. The manufacturer jacks up the price, at least as much as the rebate, and then just takes the rebate before the car gets in the hands of the purchaser. <laughs> I agree with your statement in your last video. They were trying to sell a $17,000 car for $40,000. Doesn't make much sense value-wise. I just don't think I will buy one. I'll build my own. Your videos still have my go. rapt attention, even the battery ones. Bob Gilpatrick of South Daytona, Florida. Huh. Bob, welcome to my world, yeah, yeah, right? Well, welcome. <laughs> but wow. he brings up an interesting point. If the manufacturers desperately want to move entirely to electric, a magnetic, a galvanic drive for their automobile, <laughs> and they change their whole corporation to do that, they're barred by law in the United States from selling the cars. Really? It's true. General Motors cannot sell you a vehicle. That's, well, that is right. Yeah, they can't sell directly to you. They have to they sell have to, through We've the got to go through the dealer. This is an antiquated uh, pre-internet uh, um, measure of getting... Um, um, people in your state legislatures to vote you a license to do business, which is a license to steal. Right, right, yeah. And so car dealers are essentially working that. The problem is, for them, there's no real upside to an electric vehicle. No, they lose, they lose a lot. First, they have yeah. to yeah. do a lot of training yeah. to even be able to talk about them. 
Uh, it's a new thing, not invented here. But the really big issue is that the mountain of work that they do under warranty for these uh, internal combustion mm -hmm. engine cars and the um, mountain of consumables that go in them Absolutely. are a huge element of their profit. They make two or three thousand dollars selling you the car and they'll make that the first year uh, in warranty work. In warranty work, work yeah. yeah. And, and from you, they get the consumables, the, the uh, um, fluids and the belts yeah, and, and filters the, uh, and stuff, filters yeah. and so forth. Yeah. We don't have very much of that on an electric car. No, not in the drivetrain. We certainly don't. And so it's not really, um, they don't see any reason to do it. And so they're, uh, I mean, we caught red-handed some uh, Volt dealers, I took a look at this, and they were absolutely doing it. One of them finally admitted it to me. <coughs> at the end of the year, they were taking the car, claiming the $7,500 deduction. <laughs> I remember that. Jesus. And then selling the Sell, Volt as used cars. <laughs> yeah. at 100 miles on it. Yeah. And so Volt's 42.5. And so after the um, the coupon clipping, right, right, yep. after they took the seventy five hundred dollars, it should be for sale for thirty five. Thirty five, right? yeah. No, thirty seven five. Thirty seven five. A little extra profit in there. Yeah, they they were going to get you coming. Yeah, in, yeah, a little extra. Jeez. The dealers uh, are a big part of the problem uh, in a manufacturer selling the car. Yeah, yeah. And so if you don't have control of your dealers you don't have a way to sell an electric car. And, and, and Toyota does. Yeah, yeah. Their dealers do exactly what they tell them to. Yeah, And yeah. BMW probably does. Yeah, they've, they've got a little better but control. General Motors and Nissan and that do not. Yeah, and then look at Tesla, no dealers. Tesla is going another way. Uh, they're uh, they're going to go with these stores and kind of become dealers in 50 states and sell like Apple retail, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. and they have recognized that this is a disruptive technology, and they're not going to put themselves at the mercy of, the, of, of these the, of, of, the, of the, yeah, the existing chain. Sure, and so that's the kind of change that it's going to take. Um, hello, Jack and Brian. Very nice presentation hello. on brushes. Thank you. This is from Tom Brunka. We hello love you. Hi, Tom. I also like the way you emphasize that the direction of rotation during brush seating is very important that it matches the direction of rotation when driving the vehicle forward. Yeah. Ooh. Another important point that you made is that it is very important that the brush angle is in the proper direction for your direction of rotation. Yes, you are correct. We do not want the comm surface rotating into the long side of the brush. Mm -hmm. Instead, it should be rotating away from the long side of the brush. Yes, I did change the brush terminal from a fork lug to a ring <laughs> lug. We had a couple of reasons for this. Typically, an EV application will have the highest value and the most number of overloads per hour. So in an effort to improve the connection, more contact area and to spread to prevent the spread of the fork when tightened and to make an easily identifiable difference between the net gain brushes that are intended for EV applications and those that are intended for other applications. Mm. We have okay. made the EV brush a ring and kept the fork for the other brushes. Yes, you have also sold me on the Nordlox. Thanks for your help and continued support. That's Tom Brunka Tom from Brunka. Hellwig. Yeah. Um, well, we uh, we found out some things. It's a, a little more tedious to change the brushes. It, yeah, it is a little, the, little bit but just loosening I, it. But. I, I buy the contact thing. It, it was and, bigger. Yeah. And, and it works a lot better with the Nordlox with yeah. it not being a fork. That, yes. That yeah. really wouldn't quite work. No, it, and it with really. with the ring, it does. Um, I've also talked to George a little bit and Tom and some of our viewers, um, George is going to the 860 brushes as the oh. normal brush. So they're now gonna that's going to take five or six months to work its way through the system uh, okay. Good. Um, of inventory and, and already built motors. Because those are the street Morphe. brushes, yeah. Yeah, good. But he's going to go to the street brushes, the 860s, mm -hmm. as his normal brush. I've had a couple of inquiries about where to buy the brushes. 
Uh, okay. And mm -hmm. I've um, kind of had a thought that we would sell them on our online store. The problem is that George Hamster and NetGain do not sell anything on their website, even their motors. You cannot That's get on the right. NetGain the, website there's and no, buy a There's motor. no store there, you're right. You have to go through one of the dealers. Now, what of the dealers are going to stock these brushes? Which you're talking $150 for a set right, of brushes. Right, for a set of brushes, yeah. Um, 300 if you need two, two sets, sets like us. Right, yeah. Again, thanks, Tom. <laughs> uh, he provided those he credits. He did, nice testing. Um, but George is saying that they're looking at it and, and they may indeed start selling the brushes on the website. Okay, okay. And that would be the ideal That'd, that'd be situation. the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of interest in carrying them and and the problem is George doesn't either at 150 bucks a set he's not going to make anything 30 bucks or something. right and they smell bad and they smell bad <laughs> um, but uh, but he's the one that should carry them he, as he, a courtesy he, he, because he sells the motors right and um, that would be, be your first choice your first call and, yeah and so uh, uh, you know I would I, th I think he's probably going to go to that and you'll be able to buy the Helwick brushes there. I had one other notable email that I didn't uh, bring. Tom Clazo informs me that after downloading every single one of our uh, videos that oh, we were told missing me. three or they had, you know, missed. And so I worked with them a little bit and we tracked all three of them down. Okay. You know, so all they're of all up now. They're now <laughs> up uh, for download. But can you imagine? He said it was... 200 hours of video. Oh, God. Over what? 200 gigabytes of uh, um, wow. data, uh, even with some of them being the iPhone version. Uh, yeah. It's just Jeez. an immense uh, collection of video. And I, I'm like, dude, dude, <laughs> I don't think I've even watched <laughs> We've watched them all. But we make them, damn it. We make them. <laughs> Yeah, we hear from you if we mess up. Uh, I went back and one of them that was uh, uh, actually just an HTML issue on the name of the file was our December 6th, 2009 That's what you were saying, version. yeah. Uh, I'm a little depressed. <laughs> uh, we were talking a lot about A123. Oh, in that episode, I'll have to go back and watch it. Oh, man. Uh, about um, the early adoption curve. Uh -huh. About... Uh, Really, a lot of things that we're not talking about much different today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in our fourth calendar year. Uh, Christopher Fisher uh, notified me that he'd also downloaded all of them. Oh, Chris geez. does a lot of our uh, web work uh -huh. with, uh, and is work. He's done been working on the online store. Yeah, been doing the and, store for us. And yeah. now is kind of trying to build a unified field theory of of uh, um, EVTV website them. And wants uh, me to go to WordPress, oh, which for previously your, wouldn't do uh, video uh, oh, yeah. embeds, but yeah. now they do. And so, uh, um, you know, we may go to WordPress uh, okay. for the blog. Okay. Um, he's gonna gonna try, but what he's got planned there is actually some forums, and uh, which I, I I'm. He's very enthusiastic. I'm not sure we're on the same page. I have retired from the forums because I don't really approve of them. So he's going to build me one. Build, build you one anyway. Yeah. Just have to stay out of it. So what do I do when I get thrown out of mine? <laughs> That's right. Just never go. Just never go. Just never show up. The <laughs> online milieu um, was, um, you know, kind of an advance in communications in a lot of ways, uh, and, a, and a, a, a huge step backward in others. Um, people get on there and just type and type and type. Everyone in the country is now an expert and an authority, mm -hmm. except me. Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's that's right. what how how, tell how, you how would week. we know? That's right. <laughs> Here's what I found out that it could be wrong. That's right. Uh, the, <laughs> but everyone online is, is an expert. They're, they're certain. Yeah. And, um, and here's uh, how it works. And they type out these huge things. And... There, there's two things that can, there's, there's two situations I run into. Somebody can kind of write, and they're, uh, but they don't have any clue what the words mean. <laughs> and they're randomly typing, typing words stuff. into the screen. And then you have um, the Jeffrey Jenkins type, who actually does know what they're talking about, 
but can neither read nor write. <laughs> the difficult time or communicating express themselves, it. Yeah. And I have some psychopathic uh, difficulties in <laughs> dealing with other human ones, <laughs> sort of after the fashion of the Big Bang that's, Theory that's uh, right. TV that's show. That TV show that's right, to stay in the basement. And so, so that's what you get to pick from. That's it's, right. it's people who kind of know, but can't express themselves right. very artfully. And people who um, um, uh, don't know, uh, but can. But can, exactly. And they all pile into one and thing how do you with tell? no identities. Right, they're no, all anonymous. No frame of reference. Yep. Uh, they're all anonymous or by nickname. Yep. And, and they start fiercely typing at each other. <laughs> I have not found this to be a productive thing. I do troll through some of the, um, um, just lurk through some of the online things mm -hmm. quickly because I'm really good at it. And uh, just try to scarf up what bits <laughs> See of what's going on, right? That someone may have uh, churned into the air, but the pickings are discouragingly <laughs> slim. They're slim, huh? <laughs> they're they're very poor, um, and so um, it. In spite of having a long history of forums, I actually wrote some uh, Usenet software um, at one point. Um, for a, a product I had titled uh, Personal Internet Mail Processor read, we don't do news groups. <laughs> Everyone that bought it immediately requested that I add news groups. Add news groups to, to it, oh man. So I, I had to, <laughs> to do that. Now I, I call it your personal internet Personal mail internet mail processor. So you, the, 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 this is just email, not news groups. Right, and they well, had to the have news groups. Anyway, news that, groups. Yeah. Could you just add news groups? <laughs> yeah. This goes back 20 years, guys. I, yeah, I, yeah. I was fighting it out in uh, what you call the forums uh, with people that were really vicious and really good at it a long time ago. Uh, the, the, this yeah, is, the real wars. It's, it's not so much that there's, there's nothing new for me there. There's just nothing there's, new there's there. There's just nothing new there, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just awful. And uh, But uh, so... But maybe we'll have a forum and, and try it again. Um, okay. Who knows? But I found it amazing that someone would download uh, 126 videos, That's each amazing. of which cost me about 35 cents. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. That's right. <laughs> use that donation button. <laughs> yeah, use that, use that donate button. There, you, you kind of hit me for about 40 about bucks. About 40 bucks, there. I know. <laughs> Maybe 50. <laughs> right. It's going up. But welcome. I'm glad you joined Thanks. us and as a viewer, and uh, our viewership is growing. Um, I think we've got about um, six to 7,000 hardcores mm -hmm. every week mm -hmm. uh, that come on every week. Every you know, week, video yeah. On the website, about 5,500 uh, on the blog, and, and that's where they get it. Okay, yeah, right, right. Include it there. And maybe uh, 700 to 1,000 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that, that's where we're at with our core. Right, the core group. group. Yeah. But yeah. When, when you look at that, that's, you know, you're getting pretty close to 15,000 um, hardcore people. That is the that, low hanging yeah, fruit. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a market. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's where they're getting uh, people. You know, David Rivnack has a Tesla. Uh, um, Roadster and uh, Fred Baining has a leaf, and Peter mm -hmm. McWade Peter has McWade. a leaf, yep. and uh, and so uh, the 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 OEM thing and the DIY uh, and convert it uh, thing. While you're drawing all these lines of demarcation, right. understand this: you don't know what you're doing, and you don't know what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, these are not mutually exclusive groups. Right, <laughs> they're it's, the same. Uh, there is a body of people that share a belief system that a, a very neat solution to several of our problems at, at once is to move a significant percentage of our personal mobility mm -hmm. to electric drive. And they are passionate about it, but um, they're small in number at this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're at yeah. the uh, Tinker as an Innovator stage. I think it will grow. Um, I think we'll see 100,000 guys converting cars uh, in the next few years. And, and at that point, it will reach it'll, a tipping point. It'll start to grow And, and it'll fast. take off. Uh, 
uh, anything the OEMs do is actually good. Any time in the formative stage of business, anything anybody does is good. But when you have a large public and horrifying failure, <laughs> or a after couple of the them. fashion of Think and uh, you know, Aptera and uh, uh, Azure Dynamics and, and on and on, <clears throat> that's a setback. Yeah, that is. Yeah, it's it's a set, it's a it's a black eye. The venture capital dries up mm -hmm. for those kind of, of things, and um, and they and you start to lose oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yep. As you lose oxygen, that makes the next phase go slower. Real, real, yeah, it slows it down. Yeah. They are setbacks. Yes. And I have been predicting this one for some time because it worries me because it is going to slow things down. Yeah, it is. Yep. Um, but it's not going to stop anything, and it has to do with a body of individuals who have a belief system that this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And their belief system is based on a direct personal first-hand experience, mm -hmm. which um, is somewhat more reliable. Yeah, really, and, and powerful. Their Absolutely. hands don't get dirty. <laughs> right. They don't make a lot of noise when no. they drive. No. <laughs> they charge at home. They don't go to the gas station. And it's all good. Mm -hmm. And I don't all understand good. why the world hasn't grabbed this by right, those right. ears. It, it would seem so simple, yeah. It yeah. seems so obvious. Yeah. Well, it's obvious it's, to them because they've done they're it. They're doing it, exactly. And the rest of the people who haven't done it are like, ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how far does it how go? Far does it, how long does it take how to charge? How long does it take to charge? <laughs> Well, that's what we're stuck with. That is, for right now. We're going to keep fighting the battle, and, um, and we want you to join us and stay with us, and, uh, and let's, let's do it. It's not going to be easy. Uh, if it was going to be too easy, uh, we wouldn't have showed up for it. No. Would have known what was going to happen. What fun was there. Right. We'd be doing a uh, magazine about uh, sock crank crankers. Yeah, 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 sock Something crankers. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that, that's that, up and coming, by yeah, the way. Yeah, there's a lot of things like, going on. Yeah, out. that's right. <laughs> this one, I, I like the passion that the, uh, the people that are involved in it have for it. Um, that's a very neat thing to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so don't, uh, because uh, the whole world doesn't change overnight, um, to validate that does not mean uh, that your passion or your uh, solution that you've arrived at is incorrect. Uh, we live in some very uh, odd times where most of the world is seen through the eyes of a 24-year-old titty blonde on TV whose main intellectual accomplishment is being able to get through makeup <laughs> and a mic check. We can at least do the mic check. I, we do a lot of mic checks, <laughs> but, and I'm not very good at that, frankly. The blonde would no, she, close she, me she, down. That's right. right that'd be away, it, man. It'd be over. Like, wow. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll see you next week. All right. See you next week.